Hello and welcome once again to the hard Brexit scenario on Football Manager 2020. We're on to part six. It's the end of the season and this is my second attempt at doing this video. Originally we were going to show you all the lower leagues and who'd got promoted and whatnot there but after trying to do that we were hitting about 45 minutes getting everything done and we don't want a 45 minute video. Half an hour is long enough as it is. So we don't really want to go an extra 15 on top of that. So, uh, yeah. So instead we're just going to do all the top divisions, see who has qualified for next season's Brexit, Champions League and Empire League from all of the leagues that are entering. No cups on this one. We'll have a look at the cups next time. What we'll do is we've skipped to 14th of May because it's the end of the season. Next time we'll skip to the end of May so we can see who's won all the tournaments and who well, we might even watch one of the finals. Uh, but to start with, we're going to have a look and see who's qualified from our Caribbean countries. Anguilla, who has won the senior league there? Why, it is Roaring Lions. Uh, one thing that's great about the Caribbean leagues are some of the team names, such as Roaring Lions, Ballers, Uprising, Docks United, these teams. So, so yeah, Roaring Lions won the league on goal difference with a 10-goal ten, ten swing ahead of Kicks United, who were the last winners. So Roaring Lions will be in the Brexit Champions League, Kicks United into the Empire League. On to do, 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 Bermuda in the Premier Division there. Retaining their crown are PHC Zebras ahead of North Ridge Rams. Not quite as close in that one. They were seven points clear this time. While Flanagan's Onions, another great team name in the Caribbean, relegated to the second tier. Over to the British Virgin Islands. We can see that the wonderfully titled Sugar Boys won the BVI Premier League and take their spot in the Brexit Champions League. Panthers will be in the Empire League next time. I think that's two completely different teams that were in it last time. I have a quick look at One Love. Oh no, Sugar Boys were in the uh, Empire League last time, but they've upgraded to the to the Brexit Champions League. One Love, the Champions League entrance this time, finishing mid-table. Rebels uh, are relegated to the second tier. Meanwhile, in the Cayman Islands, no relegation there, only one division. And the top team in there are the Elite. Elite win. AE dub. Uh, Scholars take second spot. Uh, best team name there I would say would be uh, possibly Future or Latinos. Not not too much fun in the Cayman Islands uh, for team names really. Montserrat only one division there. In fact I had to create five teams to make it an actual proper league. There was only three teams originally. Uh, one of those didn't have a badge. One of them was PC United if you're wondering what the other, real, the other team was. The rest are real teams but they're ones that I had to Great. St. John FC St. John's Police Ideal and Elberton made the playoffs there. You can probably see who won the playoffs there, but we'll take a quick look at the actual playoffs. And the final. So FC St. John's won the playoffs 1-0 against Police. So those two will be the teams that play in the UK competitions next season. The final Caribbean country is Turks and Caicos Islands. Theirs is a bit weird, it's another playoff system, and this is genuinely how their league system worked recently, except in their season there's only six teams, uh, there's just seven on the game for the Turks and Caicos Islands. Flamingo finished bottom and missed out on the playoffs, while the top six all made the playoffs. In, in real life there are six teams and they all make the playoffs, so the whole season is just a way of deciding a draw for the playoffs. Full physic. SWA Sharks were the teams that made this went straight to the semis. In the quarterfinals it looked like this with Academy, with Academy Eagles and Cheshire Hall going through. But however both of those teams went out in the semi-finals to Full Physic and SWA Sharks. In the final, as you could probably guess by now, Full Physic won it on penalties at a neutral venue, the Raymond Garden Ground in Bottle Creek. The other uh, out, the other one that I didn't create, Gibraltar. Well, I did create it, but I didn't create. I, I you know what I mean. Gibraltar National League, Europa League, uh, Europa One, uh, and they'll be in the Champions League, not the Europa League or the equivalent, the Empire League. That'll be St Joseph's. Lincoln Redeems missing out 
uh, possibly for the first time in a while. No relegation there, used to be relegation, but they changed this season, which is the reason why Man City and Man U both got to be in both tournaments, because because uh, it was their first season, there was no previous winners, as you can see there. But there are winners now, and hopefully they will be taking their spot in the Champions League and, and Empire League next season. In the British territories, if we take a quick look at the winners and runners-up here. Ramsey won the Isle of Man League, and Douglas Royal take the Empire League spot, while in Guernsey in the Priol League, I assume that's how it's pronounced, uh, Guernsey won, we'd already know they won, they won it before the last video, uh, Manzur were the best of the rest on goal difference. Somehow third place still got a minus one goal difference. That's, that's some that's some going. In Jersey, in the Jersey football combination, Jersey Bulls, the, the only Jersey team in the English football pyramid, won the league by 12 points ahead of St. Ewan, who were second on 58 points. Uh, a lot of Saint teams there, but none of them could finish top. In the Pitcairn Islands, we already knew who won that one. Uino Island beating Henderson Island in the final. On in Akrotiri and Dekelia, theirs is theirs, theirs, their season began in April, and uh, with a group two groups of four, four teams each for, from each part of the the two uh, enclaves. Uh, although the groups are mixed up, Cape Zevgari won Group A, Episcopi won Group B. The two teams then headed over to a final. Cape Zevgari winning that 2-0 to take their spot in the Brexit Champions League. Episcopi will be have to will have to resort to the Empire League instead. In St Helena, FC Lakers were top by 10 points ahead of Rovers. Uh, so that's a decent season for them. They'll be in the Empire well the Brexit Champions League as we know. Because that's the whole point of this video, trying to find out who is in the European equivalent. UK equivalent of the European tournaments next season. In the Falkland Islands, the wonderfully titled House Bashers. That is a real team, according to Wikipedia, in the Falkland Islands. Although it's Wikipedia, could be all bollocks. Uh, Fire FC took the uh, the runners up spot, but yeah, the the wonderfully titled House Bashers are champions, and I, I'm hoping they get a big team because I'd love to see something like House Bashers versus Manchester United or House Bashers versus Liverpool. It would just be, it would just be funny. Um, in South Georgia, uh, we have Husvik winning the league there, four points clear of the Central Islands, who will uh, take an impressive Empire League spot. I imagine we will be seeing a few 10-0 defeats of them in the next season. Uh, although the Empire League, they don't have as many of the big teams, but if they get drawn against someone like the, the London runners-up or, or the uh, Man Greater Manchester runners-up, you never know. And the next, the other two we knew already, Blues beat Greens in the final of the British Antarctic Football Tournament, and in the British Indian Ocean Champions, Tro Indi British Indian Ocean Territory Champions Trophy, Nelson Islands beat the De beat Danger Island one 0 in the final there. So we already knew who was qualifying for what there. On to Northern Ireland, which has been criminally uh, missed out on throughout this season, because, well, there's just loads of stuff in there. We we don't really see much. Uh, well, we're only going to be looking at the top divisions here, so apologies for any lower league, uh, anyone who wants to see what's happening in the lower league. It's just because of the playoffs, we can't. Uh, we have to keep clicking on and off them, and it takes forever, and then we'll be hitting 45 minutes. Uh, Ballymena United won the league there, 42 wins out of 42, and the lat is alongside an impressive run in the Empire League. Well, they get an upgrade now because they get to be in the Brexit Champions League. 126 points out of the... Uh, out of 126, loads of wins, on, only 11 goals conceded. Larn took second spot, Carrick in third, all finishing well over 100 points. So a decent season all round there. Unfortunate for Carrick because they miss out on the uh, tournament, but they still get a bit of prize money. Relegated, Barn United, Lower Maze, and All Saints Old Boys. In the County Armagh Premiership, Glenavon were champions, 95 points, and they were six points clear of Porterdown in second. So a decent season for both of those. Again, Lull were in third, Dollistown fourth, Armagh in fifth, relegated AFC Silverwood and Tully Vallon. In County Down, Newry City AFC retain their crown. I believe it's retained. Yes, uh, ahead of Ards in second. There was only two points clear. Uh, 
Not many points dropped all season between the two of them. Warren Point finished third, Bangor fourth, Banbridge in fifth. While relegated, Bestbrook United, Ballina Hinch Olympic and Greenwell Star. In County Fermina, Fermina, uh, no relegation there. There's only 14 teams in that county apparently, on the game anyway. Top of the pops though was Ballina Mallard United who route romped their way to league 39 played 38 won only one game where they dropped points and that was a one-all draw with Ennis Killen Galaxy 115 points that's a full 30 points clear of Lisbelau United in second Ennis Killen Galaxy finished third and Ennis Killen Rovers fourth Irvinstown fifth because for some reason I'm going through the top five uh, which is fair enough in County Londonderry, Coleraine were champions, 83 points, four points clear of Institute in foot in second, uh, we, who were themselves 12 points clear of Limvade United. Tobermore finished third, a fourth I mean, and Port Stewart fifth. Relegated, Kilrea United and Heights. Is there anything longer to that, or are they literally just called Heights FC? Uh, so mate, we get we get some interesting names in. Uh, Northern Ireland as well. Is there a place called Heights, maybe, or is it, is it in a specific? Or are they just called a? They just called Heights. No information. <laughs> uh, doesn't say. Fair enough. I'm gonna have to Google this after the video. County Tyrone. We have Dungannon Swifts winning the league. 88 points. Nine points clear of Dergview in second. Strabane Athletic. Kayak United and Caledon Rovers complete the top five, while relegation is suffered for Cookstown Youth and Strathroy. Finally in Northern Ireland, the Belfast Premiership. Glen Torren were champions ahead of perennial winners Linfield. So a decent season for Glen Torren, dropping just enough points to not be overtaken by Linfield, who dropped just enough points to not win the league. Cliftonville were third, Crusaders in fourth and Dundella in fifth. Uh, this this is possibly the most tight division in Northern Ireland because all the big teams are in Belfast, uh, including Donegal Celtic who finished seventh. And they're they're pretty big as well as far as as far as I'm aware. Anyway, relegated sorry, Immaculata, Shankill, Dunmurry Wreck and Malachians. And that is Northern that's the Northern Irish Premiership. We can. Uh, We'll see who get pro gets promoted when we do a preview of the new season, uh, which will be in a few parts time. Over to Wales, we have Cluid, uh, the one the league that has the most teams in. There's 126, I think, or 120 something overall. Wrexham were champions, 107 points. That was pretty straightforward. They think they were just about to win it when we last checked. Ruffin finished second on 85, taking an Empire spot, Empire League spot ahead of Colwyn Bay. Connors Key and Sefin Druids. Airbus finishing sixth as well. So there's Ruffin finishing ahead of plenty of decent teams. In relegation spots, Denby, Queen's Park and Clandudno Junction. In Dyford, uh, this one's a pretty impressive one because last time we checked, Penrenkoch were fourth uh, and they've managed to rise above the three big teams above three bigger teams above them because Aberystwyth, Carmarthen and Clinetley are all I would say are bigger teams than Penn and Cop if you know your Welsh football I'm, I have a decent knowledge I'd say decent-ish anyway two points clear they finished of Aberystwyth uh, so well done to them Haverford West took fifth spot relegation was for Pempercow, Newcastle, Emlyn and Cardigan moving on to Gwent Newport County had already won the league when we last checked uh, and in the end, they finished 25 points clear of Undy in second, who themselves get to have a second stab at the Empire League because they were they were the second highest reput reputable team uh, when I set the uh, who was going into the tournaments last time up. Newport YMCA and Panteg are relegated. Meanwhile, third, fourth, and fifth Monmouth, Cumbrian Celtic, and Abergavenny. In Gwynedd. Bangor City and Bala swap places for tournaments next season as Bangor top the league on 110 points, Bala finish on 89 in second, Holyhead a third, Trierda Bay Bulls in fourth and Clanberis in fifth. So Bangor in the Champions League, Bala in the Empire League next season. In Migla Morgan, Murford Town, 
keep their spot in the Champions League, 110 points gained from them. Aberdeer finish a surprising second on 93. Pennybont in third. Cluid uh in fourth. I think that's how you pronounce it. Apologies if I've mispronounced it. And Clambrian, Cambrian and Clydak in fifth. Relegation is suffered by Kerau, Treharis and Betus. I think half this video is YouTube goal, just me trying to pronounce Welsh team names. In Powys, Newtown, top of the league, ahead of Clanreda in second, Gillsfield in third, Clanidlows in fourth, and Carno in fifth. Uh, the top three were pretty close together, if I'm honest. Eight points between the top three. Uh, relegation, Kerry, Waterloo Rovers, Hay St Mary's, and Roscoch uh, will be going down. In South Glamorgan, this one was a given. Somehow it took them until the last video for us to find out that it was confirmed, but Cardiff were champions. They only conceded two goals all season, including one against Barry in the final game of the season. Barry themselves finished second on 89 points, while third was Clangmet Major, fourth Cardiff met, Uni, Cardiff met Uni, and fifth STM Sports. Bottom two, Canton Libs and Trebinog will be down in the second tier next season. In West Glamorgan, Swansea finally overcame Port Talbot to take top spot. In fact, they finished nine points clear in the end. Uh, Port Talbot, they got second spot, 102 points. Still very good season for them, and they get an Empire League spot next season. Afan Lido, Neef, and Swansea University complete the top five. In the bottom three, though, relegated Swansea Dockers, Kilvey Fords, and Trebuath. Moving on to Scotland. We can see the final tables in the top tier there. In Angus, as you can see, Dundee top of the league, 100 points, 9 points clear of City rivals Dundee United. And Arbroath in 3rd, 4th far in 5th and Montrose in 6th. Although it's not that good a time for the town of 4th far as two of their teams got relegated, 4th far West End and 4th far Albion and East Craigie joining them in the second tier. The expected result at the end of the Ayrshire Premiership was what we got. Kilmarnock winning the league but their 113 points was only four points ahead of Air United in second. Baith, Glenafton and Auchinleck Talbot completed the top five while relegated were Bonnington and Nifsdale. In central Scotland there's no relegation there, only one tier. Falkirk top in the league, that's not too much of a surprise. 102 points they won it by, or won it with, sorry. Aloha Athletic get a second shot at the Empire League. They had a wonderful run in this one. Uh, and they finished on 103 points to take second spot. Also, Scottish League teams Sterling, Albion and Stenhousemere finishing third and fourth with former Scottish League team East Stirlingshire finishing fifth. Probably the highest finish they've had in a while. I don't know how they've been doing in the, in the non-league, to be fair. In Dumfries and Galloway, Queen of the South, top of the league, 96 points, 12 points clear of Stranra in second, who get a second shot at the Empire League once again. Third were Anan Athletic on 81, Delpiti Star were in fourth, and Gretna 2008 in fifth. In five, Dunfermline kept their place in the Brexit Champions League with 112 points. Rafe Rovers finished second and a fantastic season for Kelty Hearts who are third finishing ahead of two actual Scottish League teams in East Fife and Cowden Beef. Celtic and Rangers did finally catch up with all those fixtures they were behind by and unfortunately for Celtic it might have caught up with them too much as they dropped points in one of their last few in one of their last few games no not even in the last few games because I think they played their last few like 40 games in the last two weeks of the season but they dropped points to Partick Thistle 1-1 and Rangers did not do the same zero games drawn they both lost one so Rangers finished two points clear at the top of the Brexit Champions League uh, or, sorry of the Glasgow Premiership and get to play in the Brexit Champions League instead of Celtic who were in the quarterfinals as we found out on the last video we don't know how we'll have to have a look on the next video to find out where they finished in that Partick Thistle, Dumbarton and Queen's Park complete the top five. While in Grampian, Aberdeen, top of the league, 122 points. They they caught up completely, only dropping points in two games all season. Peterhead finished second on 103 and Elgin City on 101. So decent finishes for those two. Cove Rangers and four Martin United complete the top five with Maud, Stonehaven and New Elgin spending some time in the second tier next season. In the Highland and Islands Premiership, Ross County finished top of the league, one point clear of Inverness, Caledonian, Thistle, and those two will 
keep their safe their, will keep their spot safely in the Brexit Champions League and Empire League next season. Brora, Fort William and Nairn County are the teams in the top five. Fort William they 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 won twenty five games. That's this is not real life, clearly. Relegated Nairn St Elian, Fockhubbers <laughs> and John O'Groats. While in Lanarkshire, Motherwell, top of the league there, 118 points. Four points ahead of Mount Hamilton Academical, who themselves are nine points ahead of Airdrie United. Clyde and Albion Rovers complete the top five, and relegation is suffered by Forneywood United and Colville Park. In Lothian, I think this is possibly the last massive one, uh, Hibs and Hearts, the top two, and it went to Hibs as they they dropped less points than Hearts did. Hearts finishing two points behind Hibs overall. Livingston also finishing over 100 points as well as the two big Edinburgh teams, while Edinburgh City and Spartans are the other teams in the top five. Relegation is for Musselburgh Athletic, Musselburgh Athletic Dunbar United and Trenant. In Perthshire, we already knew who was champ, who were champions on the last video. St Johnston taking it, 108 points they finished on overall. That's uh, that's maximum points for those who can't see. Uh, Kinool finished second, a full let's say that's uh, 41 points behind, no, no, 39 points behind St Johnston overall. Gene Field Smiths in third. Uh, don't even, you can see the rest of the table there. In Renfrewshire, it's a little different from the rest of it because I wanted to make it a little different. St, St. Mirren, Morton, Clydebank and Vale of Liven making the playoffs there. And then I click the wrong button and send it to that screen. Uh, and then in the playoffs, semi-finals, Morton beat Clydebank, St. Mirren beat Vale of Liven. And in the final, as you could probably guess from the rest of the screen, Morton won the game on penalties in Kilmarnock to take the Renfrew Premiership. Finally, Scottish Borders, Vale of Leven, not Vale of Leven, uh, won their league with 70 points, 5 points clear of Gala Feridine Rovers, Coldstream taking third, Peebles fourth, blah blah blah. Right, we're done in Scotland. The main event, who finished top of the English top tier of the 40 English top tiers, which 40 teams will be playing in the Brexit Champions League in from England. In Bedfordshire, that was an easy one. Luton, 36 wins out of 36, 115 goals scored. That one we pretty much knew was going to happen. However, second spot was a little more tightly contested with Barton Rovers finishing second on 77 points. Four points clear of third, fourth and fifth. Leighton, Dunstable and Kempston who all finished on 73 points. 71 points for Biggles Wade in sixth as well. In Berkshire, Reading were the expected winners there and they only dropped four points all season. So that was a good win for them. 80 points. They finished ahead of Maidenhead, who had 72 points. Slough were third, Hungerford fifth and Thatcham in fifth. Sorry, Hungerford fourth, Thatcham in fifth. Then in Bristol and Gloucestershire, this one was a t closely contested one. But unfortunately for Forest Green, they lost track at the end there. Bristol City finally overtaking them in the last last part of the season finishing only two points ahead but consolation for Forest Green is they get an Empire League spot and second place in the English leagues gets 50 million so it's not too bad Bristol City get 80 million though so it's even better for them Cheltenham finished third Bristol Rovers fourth and Gloucester City in fifth relegation for Yate and Slimbridge in Buckinghamshire Wickham top of the league by one point ahead of MK Dons and then two get to swap tournaments for next season as MK Dons were Champions League team last time Wickham were in the Empire League Chesham, Ellsbury Vale and Ellsbury United complete the top five no relegation there while in Cambridgeshire Peterborough were the expected winners 34 wins out of 34 uh, 102 goal, 112 goals and uh, well, they did well all season, only conceded four all season. Cambridge took second place on 94. Histon were third. Peterborough Sports in fourth and St. Neots in fifth. In Cheshire, Crewe, uh, they eventually won it by six points ahead of Macclesfield Town. Cheshire were third on 71 points. That's a decent season for them. Warrington and Runcorn Town complete the top five. While in the bottom two were Runcorn Linnets and Widners. And they will be going down Cornwall. We'd already knew we already knew who was winning that one. Truro, 88 points they finished on, which was uh, 41 points clear of Godolphin in second, who I'd say is a good season for them because they get their 50 million prize 
prize windfall and they get Empire League which also gets them possibly a bit of money too Falmouth missing out on a second Empire League run in in mid table Carlisle won the Cumbria Premier Division 14 points clear of Barrow Workington took third Kendall fourth Penrith in fifth that one was hard to say uh, in Derbyshire Derby County were top of the league that's not too surprising 99 points out of 99 82 points was for, was for second place Chesterfield Alfreton were in third Matlock in fourth and Mickelover in fifth Long Eaton and Re Long Eaton Gresley were relegated to the second tier in Devon unfortunately for Tiverton they weren't able to keep the pace and dropped more points and dropped places as Exeter took their second place spot and Empire League spot Plymouth were champions though and that one's was pretty straightforward they were the favorites 104 points they got Torquay third Biddeford in fifth just to complete the that in Dorset Bournemouth not surprising there 26 wins out of 26 104 goals scored 78 points Dorchester finished second on 63 Weymouth third on 61 who also had the same amount of points as Pool in fourth and Wimborne were fifth on 45 points a clear distance behind in Durham, Hartlepool top of the league on 108 points. Darlington took second. Third was Spennymore on 91. Stockton on 90. Who dropped? They dropped a couple of places. Didn't get to enjoy Empire League football. Instead, they get a bit of a windfall, but not as much as the other teams. And Thornaby were fifth. In Essex, Colchester they were probably the favourites for most of the season. 82 points they won the league by. 75 for South End in second, Billericay were third, Braintree fourth, Chelmsford in fifth. Relegation was suffered by Harlow, Grays and Brightling C. Okay, one of the big ones now, Greater London. Tottenham had a decent lead last time we checked. Did they hold on to it? Yes, they did. They finished the season unbeaten, which is impressive when they're in a division with Arsenal and Chelsea. Uh, 98 points they finished on. Uh, I don't even think they have Mourinho, Mourinho on this one because uh, this this came out before Mourinho took over. Uh, Arsenal finished second on uh, 85 points while Chelsea took third spot on 79. Not a good season for Chelsea, I'd say. Uh, Crystal Palace finished fourth, Fulham in fifth. West Ham a distance behind those teams in sixth while Brentford, Millwall and QPR were seventh, eighth and ninth. Charlton completed the top ten. Unfortunately, Bromley were relegated alongside Welling United and Dulwich Hamlet. In Greater Manchester, Man U beat Man City to top spot. They didn't lose. Man City did to Man U once, 2-1. And the teams also drew one game, 1-0. Uh, so Man City ended up finishing three points behind Manchester United in the end. Uh, no Champions League football for Man City next season. In the relegate, well, for the rest of the top five, sorry, Wigan, Watch, Rochdale and Salford. Bolton in sixth and Oldham in seventh. Lot, lots of league teams. Berry gets saved and then lit, finish in 11th. In the relegation spots, Hyde, FC United and Atherton Collieries. In Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, Southampton are champions. 76 points. They are 9 points clear of Portsmouth in 2nd. 3rd were Eastleigh, 4th Haven and Waterlooville and 5th Aldershot. While in relegation spots, Farnborough and Petersfield into the second tier. In Herefordshire, we knew Hereford had already won it. They ended up finishing 30 points clear of Westfields in second. Uh, Pegasus Juniors and Uyas Harold, they may have finished second and last and last in respectively, but they still get some decent prize money as well, because if I just check what the rules are there. 40 million and 25 million. They could be forces in the future, uh, because that's, uh, that's good just for finishing last, really, compared to some of the other teams. Some of the other prizes that last gets when you're in a 20 team di division in Hertfordshire Watford were the expected winners only dropping points in one game all season Stevenage finished second on goal difference ahead of Boreham Wood while fourth were Hemel Hempstead and fifth St Albans relegated were Burke Hampstead Hartford and Ware in Kent Gillingham were top of the league 86 points they finished on 11 points clear of Ebbsfleet United who get the Empire League spot Dover were third on 65 while Maidstone and Dartford complete the top five relegation for Chatham Seven Oaks and Ramsgate in Lancashire this one was a tight one and Premier League Burnley missed out to Championship Blackburn at the end there I believe they played near the end and uh, Burnley dropped points there um, and uh, 
They didn't. They, in fact, it must have been very close. Blackburn must have won like every game at the end. Both teams winning every. It's oh no, there we go. There's there was the points dropping. Blackpool four games from the end. Preston finished third on 78. Blackpool in fourth. Accrington in fifth. Fleetwood in sixth. Relegation was for Colne and Lancaster. In Leicestershire and Rutland, that one was straightforward. Leicester won the league. 100% record, 102 points, 118 goals, barely any conceded. Colville took second spot and entered the Empire League. Barwell in third, Odeby in fourth, Corn in fifth. Uh, my local teams, Hinkley in 13th uh, and Leicester Road relegated in 16th alongside Heather and Kirby Muxlow. In Lincolnshire, Lincoln City won by one point, 97 to 96, ahead of Scunthorpe United, with Grimsby in third on 90 points, Boston in fourth, Grantham in fifth, 12th and 13th, the relegated teams, Hull Beach and Spalding. This one was pretty much a given. Liverpool, 30 wins out of 30, 100% record, 151 goals scored. They won the league. 11-0 they won their final game against St Helens. Everton took second spot, dropping only match, only points against Liverpool all season. So they also had a decent season, but not as good as Liverpool. Tranmere got third spot. Southport were fourth. Marine in fifth. No relegation there. In Norfolk, Norwich were top. 90 points. 75 for Kings Lynn in second. Galston were third. Wroxham fourth. Thetford fifth. While in Northamptonshire... The county capital were champions there, Northampton Town, 95 points, only dropping points in two games over the whole season. Kettering was second, Brackley third, Corby fifth, or Corby fourth, sorry, and AFC Rushton Diamonds take fifth place. In the relegation spots, Northampton, Owen Chenex and Coganhoe. Northumberland, Tweedmouth, they kept their lead going for the entire season and become one of the few English teams that don't have a badge. Uh, to win their league, Brexit Champions League football for Tweedmouth next season. Blythe Spartans were in second, Morpeth third. It's a small division, you can see it all there. Nottinghamshire, Nottingham Forest top of the league, 95 points there. Ahead of Mansfield in second on 87, Notts County in third on 81, Basford and Carlton are the rest of the top five. Arnold and Clipston are demoted to the bottom or to the second tier. In Oxfordshire, Oxford United top of the league there. Uh, they were in the end seven points clear of Fem United in second. Oxford City were third. Banbury in fourth. Did quite in fifth. Quite a close one actually there. Top five all finishing with over 90 points. In Shropshire, Shrewsbury kept that lead and eventually were able to win the league. Four points ahead of TNS in second, who get an Empire League who get to have an Empire League run now. AFC Telford finished third, Whitchurch in fourth and Market Drayton in fifth. While in Somerset, Yeovil, the biggest team there, got to uh, cement that reputation by finishing top of the league, 93 points. Paulton in second, Bath in third, Frome in fourth, Taunton in fifth. Oh, relegation also for Odd Down and Wells. In Staffordshire, this one was a close one. Stoke and Burton finishing both on 117 points. The only points each team were dropped was against each other in, so they beat each other home in their in their respective games. But overall, Stoke scored better. Uh, well, essentially scored more really and had a better goal difference. So Stoke take top spot. In third were Port Vale on 105. Tamworth were fourth on 83, and Kidsgrove were fifth in 78. Hednesford almost taking that spot on 77 and Leek in 7th on 76, very close in Staffordshire. In Suffolk, Ipswich top of the league, that one was not quite as close, 124 points they finished there, only 2 points off 100% record. Leiston were 2nd, Needham Market 3rd, AFC Sudbury 4th and Berry Town in 5th. In Surrey, uh, the best team in Surrey were Woking, and they proved that by coming top of the league on 107 points. Uh, second was Staines on 89, third Dorking, fourth Leatherhead, fifth South Park, not that one. Sixth Whiteleaf, one of my old local teams. Relegation was for Westfield, Camberley, Banstead and Sutton Common. In Sussex, Brighton, 30 wins out of 30. 100% record for them, so a good season overall. Uh, second were Crawley, 
that's not too surprising. They are the second best team in Sussex. And uh, they did lose four games in the end. Two to Brighton, one against Bognor Regis and one against Horsham. So not that good a season, even if they were second. Bognor Regis finished third, Lewis fourth and Hastings in fifth. While Three Bridges, Eastbourne Town and Horsham YMCA were the teams dropping down a division. In Tynham Weir, Newcastle were champions there, 100% record. We, we, we saw it coming by the end, really, especially when Sunderland had already dropped points to several teams. Sunderland themselves finished second on 86, only five points ahead of Gateshead in third. Fourth were North Shields, fifth Hebburn. So in the end, Stratford were able to hold Nuneaton at bay. Nine points clear they finished, uh, 89 points ahead of Nuneaton on 80. So Stratford get Brexit Champions League football next season and an £80 million windfall. Not bad. Nuneaton having to fall back onto the Empire League. Not good, not too good for them. But they did finish second and 50 million. They get 50 million. So no financial worries for them. Leamington in third, Bedworth in fourth, and Coles Hill in fifth. On to the West Midlands, and this one was going to be an interesting one. In the end, Wolves overtook Aston Villa towards the end of the season to take top spot and enter the Brexit Champions League. 107 points overall, two points clear of Aston Villa in the end. Uh, they get the Empire League. Birmingham finished third. Only they, they caught up a little bit, five points behind Aston Villa. West Brom, two points behind Birmingham in fourth. Coventry take fifth. Walsall in sixth. And then Solihull Moors in seventh. Highgate, Tividale and Lye are relegated to the second tier. In Wiltshire, Swindon ran away with it. They were they lost one game all season against Salisbury, but won every single other match. They finished uh, and that's what they said. Uh, they were 16 points clear of Swindon Supermarine in second, who get a surprise uh, Empire League spot. Chippenham in third, Salisbury in fourth, and Amesbury in fifth. In Worcestershire, the penultimate league here, Kidderminster top. We knew they were going to win it, and they did it with 11 points ahead of Overchurch in second, Redditch third, Bald Bromsgrove Sporting in fourth, and Worcester in fifth. And finally, Yorkshire, another one of the tight ones. Leeds were champions, three points ahead of Huddersfield on 99 points. In who uh, Huddersfield had 99 points, Leeds had 102. The two Sheffield teams are third and fourth with 94 and 85 respectively for United and Wednesday. Hull rose up a few places into fifth by the end on 82 points. Barnsley took sixth on 80. Middlesbrough, a disappointing seventh for them on 79. Uh, Rotherham in 8th, Doncaster in 8th, all these, all these actual league teams. And finally, relegation for Scarborough Athletic, North Ferriby, Whitby and Osset United. And that is how the leagues finished in the end. It's quite a trawl. Uh, next time, we'll skip a bit more and see how the Cups finished. Hopefully that one won't take as long.